Hi and welcome to this week's Something for the Weekend. I'm Tony, sales manager here at Martin Lynch & Sons. And this week we're going to be taking a look at the ASU FT818 and is it still relevant in 2022? Well, what with the uptake in portable operations, I truly believe, and it's not just because it's one of my favourite all-time radios, that the 818 can still cut it in 2022. Kind of main reasons why, if you're out portable, what do you want as many bands as possible? 818 gives you HF, six meters, two meters, and 70 cm as standard. And kind of like the old FT290s, it will give you multi-mode on two and 70 as well. And the good thing with this is you actually get six watts. So you probably know the 817, that was a five watt QRP transceiver. With the 818, you actually get one extra watt, which you know may help you that little bit more. Also as standard with the 818 is you get the TCXO. So before it was an added additional um, unit for the 817, with this it comes as standard. So what with today's portable operation where people are doing FT8, etc., then it's gonna be really, really sturdy, especially on, or steady I should say, on uh, VHF and UHF and six meters, which is what you want primarily. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the menu system, etc., you're probably looking at it and thinking, well, it's going to be all very confusing. It's internal menus. Well, no. So, power it on here. And as you can see on the front of the display, you've got frequency on the top there, your mode, which is here, which VFO you're using. So, it's got a VFO A and a VFO B. So, again, if you want to work split, etc., it can easily be done. And then you've also got your battery life. I mean, obviously we're connected to uh, the uh, power supply at the moment. And also your power output is indicated on there as well. So it's got kind of a, a little bar indication as to whether you're running low power, medium power or high power. So uh, obviously with the batteries, you're gonna be running probably at half power just to prolong the battery use. So you're around sort of two and a half, three watts. You can, however, kind of jump it over to full power, but you know, be where it's quite a small battery that's included with the 818. So uh, operating time will be limited. So as I said on here, nice and clear display. You can change the color as well. You can go to amber if you want, or to a kind of purple color. So that's an improvement from the original 817. And if you want to go into the menus, etc., you hold the function button here. Hold that in, and as you can see here now, we're on to the menu system, which can be changed with a select knob, and rotate through. And what you'll find is there may be some changes on the numbering system here, because obviously as time progresses and firmware changes, etc., the original manual, there's a couple of discrepancies on there just with the numbers, but you, you'll find it. You'll just be able to scroll through. And, and once you know where you are and you've set it, so good thing here, if we find, let's see if we can find something nice and easy for me to set. Uh, so RF and squelch. So what you'll find here is the knob on the outer side here can either be the squelch or it can be the RF gain. And you can just select that by using the main VFO. There we go. And now we've got RF gain. And if you wanted to set that, you literally just come out of the menu system and that's set. So let's turn that down. And the good thing with the, the 818 as well, if you're out and about and you're changing bands quite a lot and you've got different settings for each band, it does remember what you set up in the menu. So it's, it's very clever in that way for its time, you know. As I said, it's 2022 now, yes, things have progressed, you know, you've got SDR, portable radios, um, you've got color screens, etc., and all the rest, but, you know, the 818 is still doing it, it's still, it's still got a lot of functions there, which you may not, you know, believe that they've done so early on. Okay, so, as I said, that's the menu set up nice and easy. Now, accessibility, Good thing with this for connecting antennas, etc. You've got your front socket on the front, which uh, rumors are that this is just for VHF, UHF. That's wrong. You can actually use this for HF. And then on the rear of the unit, you turn it around, SO239. There we go. So you can plug straight in. And again, you can select whether you want it to be HF or VHF, UHF. Now, little 
tip of the day basically when you get one of these if you're going to get one is when you power it up let's, uh, okay so you'll see their antenna it says rear if we select it over it says front so first thing before you start transmitting whatsoever check that because obviously you don't want to be tx in the way especially if you're running a digital mode and uh, all your RF going out of the socket without the antenna on. So that, that's my uh, key tip number one with the 818. So always get that set. So let's get that back onto the rear. There we go. Another nice little function with this as well is all your mode changes are done on the top. So you can change through to uh, your FM, upper sideband, etc. And then you've got your band changes as well, which are on the top and they just cycle through the amateur bands as you're going along. Good feature as well if you've not had it modified it's not been wide banded is it does keep the automatic repeater shift as well within the uk so that's great and the other good feature is it's got the band changes on the top which is there and also if it's not been modified in any way you also get the repeater offsets as standard on vhf uhf so you basically just go through and it's got your your plus or minus 600 already set on there it's not a problem CW obviously is standard and if we look at the back again you've got your key input on the rear so a little three and a half mil jack into there got a data socket as well so you can either plug it into an SEU 17 for example or you can use one of the Tigertronic signal links and it's very very easy to do okay and then obviously you've got your accessory port there so what kind of accessories can you put into this well primarily what you've probably noticed about this is the fact it doesn't have a tuner built in so what i opt for normally with the 818 or the 817 is one of the mat tuners so this is the mat 10 and the good thing with this unit is it comes complete with the relevant lead so you can plug it into the unit into the back of the radio and also you get a usb cable as well and the usb cable plugs into this plug it into a power source and then you can charge this unit as well so as you see here ready to operate and we can do the tuning here bnc connection so you can either go through the front or obviously run it through an adapter and go through the back as well so great little unit the uh, mat tuner and nice and light as well so let's pop that to one side and as i said if you're going to be using uh, one of these antenna sockets if you're going to be using the SO239, why not get yourself a little cover for the BNC at the front? So we can slot that on, put that on there, connect that through to the carry case, which I have here. There we go. And these are worth getting. So I've had one of these on my 817 since it came out. It's been up the top of the rock in Gibraltar, it's been to Cyprus, it's been to Italy, etc. And still in very very good condition considering it gets bashed around in there travel cases so as i said you can connect your bnc connection onto the case there and that's covered you get a strap as well shoulder strap to carry it around if you're on a walk which is good so what about when you're on the way to the walk and you want to operate mobile obviously you can connect it to a mobile antenna and you can use one of these sdd 13s so plug it into the socket on the back and then run that through. It's filtered as well, which is really handy nowadays. And that will get you five watts mobile. Does five, watt mo five watts mobile work? Yes, it does. Best DX Argentina for myself on 17 meters with a mobile whip. Now, mention CW. I know we're going a bit back and forwards and forwards and back at the moment today, but CW, nice little key for you. One of the CW Morse keys. Gets you straight on again three and a half mil on the back straight into the unit and you've got a nice little straight key with its built-in key don't want to do cw want to get on wear a headset etc just so happen to have a bm10 from Heil. now these connect with the ad-1 cable assemblies and there you go nice and lightweight comes with a ptt on it as well and dual headsets are so kind of like the old Walkman style headset so it is very very lightweight and nice windshielded microphone on there to work so you can go straight on if you're doing your contesting or your SOTA activations
Now, one key thing that I nearly forgot to mention is obviously it does come with a battery as well. Uh, it's a larger battery than that of the 817, so it will give you sort of two to three hours use, sparingly depending on your transmit and receive ratios, of course. So, you know, as a full portable shack in a box or shack in your pocket, it is still pretty current for 2022 because you, you're doing your digital modes, you're operating on all the bands. Yes, it does five megs as well as standard. Um, if you want to run it in the car, you can run it in the car. If you want to pop it in your pocket, you can put it in your pocket. So that's not a problem. Antenna wise, obviously you can put wires up. Not an issue. You can run it with the Mat 10 tuner. If you can't put a wire up for whatever reason, then thank you, Carl at Wonderwand. You can use any of these. So Wonderwand Widebander Mark II, which is a traditional one. Comes with a telescopic whip and the wire connector. So if you do, you know, get the chance to put a wire up when you're on the field, you can do it. Uh, select here as the noise comes up and then fine tune there straight onto the SO239 on the back. And as I said with the wires, if you want to go purely wire, he's done this great little wire version of it. So it goes on here and you connect the wires straight to the tuning unit itself. So you're kind of using it as a, a very small ATU basically. And that's great if you want to experiment with antennas as well. It's a good way of using uh, Carl's design. And we've also got the loop. So for those that don't know, 40 meters through to six meters, straight onto the back. And you get a bit of copper wire here. I think it's about a meter or so circumference. Goes onto here and again, tune for peak noise. Once you've found it, you can check the SWR. It comes with an SWR meter on the radio. Uh, away you go and start transmitting. And as I said before, one of these worked into the States from indoors, five watts. And that was on SSB. So they are, you know, it's been proven to say that they do actually work. And uh, I'll stand by that if anyone else. Additional accessories from Wonder Wand, tunable counterpoise. This is what I should have taken last time I went portable. So these are very handy. So you clip it onto the ground screw of the radio. It's normally the best way to do it. And then stick out the wire and again, tune again so you've got something for it to work against when you're running the verticals. So that works really well. And obviously you can use these with any radio. It doesn't have to be the 818. So if you're going portable. Uh, another little extra which we're doing with our 818s at the moment are the leg pegs. So very classic design. Nice and simple, pop onto the front of the radio and they basically tilt it up so you can see on the front and that's well worth having. Having had one of these for so long, it's <laughs> the worst thing is you're always looking down like this at the radio otherwise when you're operating, so they're worth getting. Um, microphone input is your standard RJ microphone from Yesu, which means if you really fancy doing it and you're at home, stick in an M90 for example so as you know these are interchangeable these leads and this will work with the 818s no problems so there we go that's kind of a really quick and a bit here and there discussion on as to whether the 818 is still relevant in 2022 uh, as I said I've got the original 817 I'd never get rid of it you know I've got newer portable radios I love QRP operating, so you know, I've got Zygus, I've got the Icom radio, I've got some other unbranded kind of SDRs that I use, but I still keep this. And I probably will always keep this, just for the fact that I can pick it up, pop it in the car, I'm not worried about it if it gets bashed about a bit because I've got the case. It hasn't cost me, you know, plus a thousand pounds to buy, and it just does the job and it does it really well. It's simple, and I spend more time listening to the band rather than fiddling with it. So I'm, I'm actually working more stations with it, even though, you know, the newer technology supposedly helps you more. Anyway, we're going to show you a little bit more about what you can do with the 818 and one of our new products that we've got. So I'm going to hand it over to Gary. OK, well, thanks for that, Tony. Um, I just wanted to show you what I've sold my 705 for. I've gone over to uh, an 818, an FT818, mainly because of the size advantages. For me, I actually, when I'm out walking or whatever, taking a 705 was just a little bit too much. So I wanted something much simpler 
um, and much lighter and this fits in my motorcycle pouches also so it means that I can take really small amounts of stuff um, and just basically go out portable so I wanted to show you what I've, I've actually got so here is essentially what I'm running with a small laptop which is actually a Windows surface um, I'm running FT8 and I'll quickly run through how this actually goes together uh, what you need to do I'm using a tiny little thing by the way let me show you this quite exciting this is uh, this is something that uh, Jonathan was playing with I think and um, this is called a, a digi rig and what I love about this is it's so so small the SCU 17 from from Yesu is also very small and it's quite lightweight and works really really well with the the FT818 but the digi rig is tiny in fact I'll be honest the cables are a little bit too big that they're, they're bigger than the actual unit itself but that's very simple to set up and it's available for other radios as well but I love it for the FT818 so I'm just speaking with the with the guy that does these um, Dennis his name is um, really really nice guy and um, I've driven him half around the twist I think this week so anyway you know but lovely lovely product and he's really really keen on those and I love it because of the size so what it means is that I can really take all of this stuff apart from obviously the, the power meter and the dummy load but I can take all this stuff in just one really really small bag and the antenna that I've been using is is this it's a this is our one here. I haven't got my one here, but this is a Windcamp. Um, it's the Carolina Wyndham type antenna. So it's like an offset uh, dipole, if you like. Um, I love this antenna. It's really, really well made. Um, you do need to hang it from some stuff. So what you need, if you've got something like a tennis ball or something like that, you can throw over a branch. Um, but that clips in. That just dangles off the two, the two sides. And you take the two connectors here, like so and you basically push those in like so and that hangs you just put the the, the dipole out um, and this is absolutely brilliant love it really really good um, it's not expensive either um, comes in a nice little orange bag so you won't be leaving it behind which often happens um, and the other thing that I've I've got um, I've actually got a um, one of the cigarette lighter type adapters on my bike under the under the seat and it means I can actually charge the the radio on the go so but I also can run other things from Anderson power pole so again this is uh, a wind camp product um, available um, just give us a shout if, you, if you're looking for one but it break, gives this little breakout board as well which is really lovely but the the FT818 um, I've been using it for digital very very quickly um, I've gone to device manager, I've identified the, the COM port here. If you go over to um, the Win, uh, sorry, the WSJTX software, whiz over to settings. Okay, if you just copy these settings here, this actually works. They've now put in the, the 818 um, the radio in there as well. Select the COM port that you found in device settings. I've got everything on default. I've set this for 38400 board. Um, this one's set to none, these are all sort of clear, set that to cat um, and I've set this to packet data and then fake it and then if I do a test it should come up green, all good, just say OK and then the radio itself very very quickly, um, in fact what I'll do is I'll list those in the description so I'll give you the settings and what menu number it is, how I've set the radio I did have a little bit of trouble with the um, the audio getting through uh, which I've resolved and it was down to USB U so I'll put all those settings in the description um, but as you can see it's up and running so that now is hopefully it's all working well so that means now I can run FT8 portable and a little radio package that I'm sure that uh, Tony's shown you that big and that fits in my back pocket so that's what I've gone over to um, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's a simple radio, it's cheap and cheerful um, and when you couple it up with something like this it's a really effective solution for portable stuff so happy days. Speak to you soon.